The Devi said, And whoever with a concentrated mind shall pray to me constantly with these hymns, I shall without doubt put down every trouble of his. And those who shall laud the story of the destruction of Madhu and Kaitaba, the slaughter of Mahishasura, and the slaying of Shumba and Nishumba, likewise. And those also who shall listen with devotion to this sublime poem on my greatness on the eighth, the fourteenth, and on the ninth days of the fortnight with concentrated mind, to them nothing wrong shall happen, nor calamities that arise from wrongdoings, nor poverty, and never separation from beloved ones. He shall not experience fear from enemies, and nor from robbers and kings, nor from weapon, fire, or flood. Hence, this poem of my greatness must be chanted by men of concentrated minds, and listened to always with devotion, for it is the supreme course of well-being. May this poem of my glories quell all epidemic calamities, as also the threefold natural calamities. The place of my sanctuary, where this poem is duly chanted every day, I will never forsake, and there my presence is certain. When sacrifice is offered, during worship, in the fire ceremony, and at a great festival, all this poem on my acts must be chanted and heard. I will accept with love the sacrifice and worship that are made, and the fire offering that is offered likewise, whether they are done with due knowledge of sacrifice or not. During autumnal season, when the great annual worship is performed, the man hearing this glorification of mine with devotion shall certainly, through my grace, be delivered without doubt from all troubles, and be blessed with riches, grains, and children. Hearing this glorification and auspicious appearances of mine, and my feats of prowess in battles, a man becomes fearless. Enemies perish, welfare accrues, and the family rejoices for those who listen to this glorification of mine. Let one listen to this glorification of mine everywhere, at a propitiatory ceremony, on seeing a bad dream, and when there is great evil influence of planets. By that means, evil portents subside, as also the unfavorable influence of planets and the bad dream seen by men turns into a good dream. It creates peacefulness in children possessed by the seizes of children, that is, evil spirits, and it is the best promoter of friendship among men when split occurs in their union. It diminishes most effectively the power of all men of evil ways. Verily, demons, goblins, and ogres are destroyed by its mere chanting. This entire glorification of mine draws a devotee very near to me, and by means of finest cattle, flowers, argya, and incenses, and by perfumes and lamps, by feeding brahmanas, by oblations, by sprinkling consecrated water, and by various other offerings and gifts, if one worships day and night in a year, the gratification which is done to me is attained by listening but once to this holy story of mine. The chanting and hearing of the story of my manifestations remove sins and grant perfect health and protect one from evil spirits, 
And when my martial exploit in the form of the slaughter of the wicked Deitches is listened to, men will have no fear from enemies. And the hymns uttered by you, and those by the divine sages, and those by Brahma, bestow a pious mind. He who is lost on a lonesome spot in a forest, or is surrounded by forest fire, or who is surrounded by robbers in a desolate spot, or who is captured by enemies, or who is pursued by a lion or tiger, or by wild elephants in a forest, or who under the orders of a wrathful king is sentenced to death, or has been imprisoned, or who is tossed about in his boat by a tempest in the vast sea, or who is in the most terrible battle under shower of weapons, or who is amidst all kinds of dreadful troubles, or who is afflicted with pain. Such a man, on remembering this story of mine, is saved from his strait. Through my power, lions, etc., robbers and enemies, flee from a distance from him who remembers this story of mine. The Rishi said, Having spoken thus, the adorable Chandika, fierce in prowess, vanished on that very spot even as the Devas were gazing on. Their foes having been killed, all the Devas were also delivered from fear. All of them resumed their own duties as before and participated in their shares of sacrifices. When the exceedingly valorous Shumba and Nishumba, the most fierce foes of Devas, who brought ruin on the world and who were unparalleled in prowess, had been slain by the Devi in battle, the remaining Daityas went away to Patala. Thus, O King, the adorable Devi, although eternal, incarnating again and again, protects the world. By her this universe is deluded, and it is she who creates this universe. And when entreated, she bestows supreme knowledge, and when propitiated, she bestows prosperity. By her, the Mahakali, who takes the form of the great destroyer at the end of time, all this cosmic sphere is pervaded. She indeed takes the form of the great destroyer at the proper time. She, the unborn, indeed becomes this creation at the time proper for recreation. She herself, the eternal being, sustains the beings at another time. In times of prosperity, she indeed is Lakshmi, who bestows prosperity in the homes of men. And in times of misfortune, she herself becomes the goddess of misfortune and brings about ruin. When praised and worshipped with flowers, incense, perfumes, etc., she bestows wealth and sons and a mind bent on righteousness and prosperous life. Here ends the twelfth chapter called Eulogy of the Merits of Devi Mahatmya in the Markandeya Purana during the period of Savarni, the Manu. The Rishi said, I have now narrated to you, O King, this sublime poem on the glory of the Devi. The Devi is endowed with such majestic power. By her this world is upheld. Knowledge is similarly conferred by her, the elusive power of Bhagavan Vishnu. By her, you, this merchant and other men of discrimination, are being deluded, and others were deluded in the past and will be deluded in the future. O great king, Take refuge in her, the supreme Ishwari. She indeed, when worshipped, bestows on men enjoyment, heaven, and final release from transmigration. Markandeya said to his disciple Bhaguri, O great sage, King Surata, 
who had become despondent consequent on his excessive attachment and the deprivation of his kingdom. And the merchant, having heard this speech, prostrated before the illustrious Rishi of severe penances and immediately repaired to perform austerities. Both king and the merchant, in order to obtain a vision of Amba, stationed themselves on the sandbank of a river and practiced penances, chanting the supreme Devi Sukta, hymn to the Devi. Having made an earthen image of the Devi on the sands of the river, they both worshipped her with flowers, incense, fire, and libation of water. Now abstaining from food, and now restraining in their food, with their minds on her and with concentration, they both offered sacrifices sprinkled with blood drawn from their own bodies. When they, with controlled minds, propitiated her thus for three years, Chandika, the upholder of the world, was well pleased and spoke to them in visible form. The Devi said, What you solicit, O king, and you, the delight of your family, receive all that from me. Well pleased, I bestow those to you both. Markandeya said, Then the king chose a kingdom, imperishable even in another life, and in this life itself his own kingdom, wherein the power of his enemies is destroyed by force. Then the wise merchant also, whose mind was full of dispassion for the world, chose that knowledge which removes the attachment in the form of mine and I. The Devi said, O king, after slaying your foes in a few days, you shall obtain your own kingdom, and it shall last with you there. And when you are dead, you shall gain another birth from the Deva Vivasvat, son, and shall be a Manu on earth by name Savarni. And, O oh best of merchants, I grant you the boon which you have desired of me. Supreme knowledge shall be yours for your self-realization. Markandeya said, Having thus granted them both the boon that each desired, the Devi disappeared forthwith as they were extolling her with devotion. Having thus gained the boon from the Devi, Suratha, the foremost of Kshatriyas, shall obtain a new birth through Surya and of his wife Savarna, and shall be the Manu, eighth, named Savarni, shall be the Manu, named Savarni. Here ends the thirteenth chapter called The Bestowing of Boons to Suratha and Vaisha, of Devi Mahatmya in Markandeya Purana during the period of Savarni, the Manu. Here ends the Devi Mahatmya of 700 mantras. Aum Tatsat Aum